Yes, guys. Good morning once again. So before we start uh, our session uh, regarding SQL and so on, so I want one of you to tell me what do you understand or what do you get into your mind when you talk about SQL in databases. So anybody would like to speak up on that? Yes, yes sir. Yes, 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 sir. We will retrieve with a uh, query language. So we'll give a command and uh, uh, we'll get the data according to our query. Awesome. Any, anybody else? So it's a structured query language. Uh, we can use this language to retrieve data from the database, but the data is stored in a, in a structured way. It may be in a tabular way or in some other structure. Oh, awesome. So SQL uh, or structured query language, that is a programming language which you use in order to retrieve uh, data which is already stored in the databases. So when you talk about data stored in the databases, there are different types of databases that we have. So we'll uh, talk about those different databases which we have and in what kind of database do we have SQL coming up? and where do we really use it? So uh, before all that, let's try to come from the basics. So most of you might have already know, but let's just uh, uh, skim through it. So first we need to understand what is a database. So database is nothing but a organized collection of data generally stored at somewhere, at some point. Okay? So when you talk about a bunch of data, let it be a photo, let it be videos, let it be just information, text, anything, so when it is stored in an organized way at a particular place, that is what we call as a database. Now, why are we specifically emphasizing organized way? Because generally, when you talk about a raw data, that is very much unstructured, you can say, or it is very, uh, you know, here and there. So what in the databases, what happens is, we take that data, we'll try to structure it. So if we have, let's say, 10 photos, five videos, and two texts, then we'll try to arrange them in such a way. So we'll arrange all the 10 photos in one format or in one folder, and we have all the five videos in one folder, and we have all the two text documents in one folder. So we'll arrange them in a particular order or in an organized way, and we'll store it. Right? So that is database. And uh, that is also the purpose wherein we store it in an organized format so that it will be easy for us to really retrieve or go to refer some. So if all the data is spread around everywhere in the database, then it will be hard for us to navigate through it and understand where that particular data is. Now, a very good example uh, could be this, uh, what do you say, the job portal. So for example, now career monster is there. Now, let's say that you want to apply for a job. So what will you do? You will just open at this Nokri or Monster uh, job portals. You will try to create your account with your username, email ID, and password. You fill in all the details, and at last, you'll have to upload your particular resume. Now, let's say that uh, while you're searching for a job, you have seen one, and that really fits your uh, job descriptions. You very much like it, and you wanted to apply for it. Now, if you click on Apply, Generally, your resume should have to be sent to that particular company's uh, job dashboard, whoever is trying to apply. Now, that happens when you have an organized way of collections. Now, let's say that person A and person B is there in the job portal. And now, person A is trying to apply for it. And when they clicked on apply, if person A's resume is sent, that is fine. Instead of person A, if person B's resume is sent, then there is something wrong with the database because that shouldn't happen generally. 
So in an organized way, in a structured way, all the data should be aligned and collected and stored so that it will be easy for your processes and for our information collection also. Now in the databases, we have generally two different types of databases. One is a general database management system wherein we have uh, all the information stored in a folder or a file format. Now, for an example, you can take your mobile phone or your systems or laptops. So if you want to store something, what will you do? You create a folder or already folders are there. And in that you'll store it. Let it be a video, let it be a photo, let it be a document, anything. And you can navigate through it using a folder or a file format. Now that happens in a database management system wherein all the information is stored in a file or a folder format. And on the other hand, we have a relational database management system. In the relational database management system, we do not have any kinds of files or folders uh, to store. Instead, we have tables. I will talk about how uh, information can be stored in the tables. However, in the relationship database management system, all the information is stored in the table format. And uh, here, when you're trying to retrieve data from RDBMS, there the SQL comes up. In general database management system, you know, if you want to retrieve any kind of information from your system or mobile phone, you will not type any SQL uh, programming language or programming query in order to retrieve it. You just go to the folders and you just open it. However, while you're trying to go through this or trying to make some data, trying to insert or retrieve some data in the RDBMS, you would have to take assistance of SQL in order to do all that manage. Okay, so that is where SQL comes in, structured query language. It is a programming language that is designed to facilitate retrieving specific information from the databases. Okay. And generally, whoever creates the databases here, the relationship databases here, they will have all these fundamental functions. They can create, they can read, they can update, and they can delete. Okay. So most of the time in all the IT organizations or any kind of companies or organizations, the people who will be handling, creating, updating, deleting, reading, everything is done by a database admin. Okay. So there will be a database administrator. Database administrator will be there. And that person is in charge of maintaining the data and going through all the changes, adding, deleting, everything. So other than database admins, no one in the company has access to use or go through any kind of data. Now, if you want to go through something, if you want to retrieve some data, uh, you would have to first formally send a mail or a request to the database admin about what is your purpose and what kind of data that you want to go through. Then they will, uh, the database admin will give you the access to read. So read in the sense you cannot make any kind of changes in the database. You can just go through the database. You can just see what are the information that is there. However, you cannot delete, update anything. Nothing happens. So they'll give you the access to read for some point of time. And once your work is done, you'll have to inform them again. And they'll revoke the uh, access that is given to you. Okay. So that is what happens. Now, this is the basic difference that you have talked about, wherein database management system applications store data as files. However, relational database management system stores data in a table of format. And where in the DBMS, you will go through the data or go through the organized files in a hierarchical format or a navigation format. You can sort the files or folders in, you know, date wise or name wise or month wise or whatever. We have different formats. However, in the RDBMS, there are some specific ways. Uh, we have primary keys, second uh, foreign keys. We'll talk about those. Uh, and uh, in the DBMS also, in general database management system, there is no connectivity or there is no relation between two particular tables or sorry, two particular folders or files. Now, let's say we have folder one and folder two. No matter what you do in the folder one, it doesn't affect folder two. So there is no relation. However, in RDBMS, you would have all the tables connected. If you have 100 tables, then all 100 tables are connected in one way or the other. Okay, And uh, this DBMS is used 
only for small data applications you know in general uh, usages so in our mobile phone systems and a few uh, small scale companies they do not handle that much of a data they just use minimum number of data and they do not uh, you know want to shift to rdms because the data is not that much huge so if the data is huge to handle then they'll shift for rdms wherein it has a capability of handling so much number of data and uh, now, if you want to do this, if you want to go through the data which is there, and if you want to type this code, you can't just go through everywhere. Right? You, you can't just open your notepad and type SQL command and expect the data to be coming up. There are some particular softwares that uh, you need to first have an idea about. And if, if anybody are from programming uh, language experience, so you would know any language that you want to type in, you would have to have a IDE. Okay. So in that you will have to type your code and run your code. Now here also we have Oracle SQL, we have MySQL, we have Microsoft Server Management Studio. So we have different kinds of uh, softwares wherein you can attach the database and um, you can then type your code to retrieve information from the database on that software. So today we're going to talk or we're going to go through all that using Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. And uh, yeah, so let's move on and try to understand a bit more about RDBMS and the tables which are being stored in it. Okay, so here this is a sample table wherein how the data is stored and so on. So every row is called as a record and every column is called as a field and a unique key identifies a row. So we'll talk about this unique key. Now here we have a small example. We have three different tables. One is a customer table. Second one is an item table. Third one is a sales table. Now let's just focus on the customer table first. So we have five different columns. ID, name, city, state, and pin number. So when you go through the name, we have uh, name, city, state, and pen. So all these uh, fields can be repetitive. Now there can be two Smiths, there can be two people coming from same location, there can, they may have same pen number. So all these things are very much repetitive. Now for example, let's say this is a data of a retail store, a very large retail store. And daily thousands of people may come in uh, in order to buy goods uh, from that retail store. And uh, every time, record is entered every time one person's payment is entered so this will be stored like this customer details and like that if you have thousand people we can't surely say that there there will not be anyone who will, who might have same names right so these names columns can be repetitive the city values can be repetitive state can be repetitive but in can be repetitive so for each and every table that you make you need to first identify which column has all the fields as unique values there is no repetition or there is no uh, blank spaces happening now in this five different columns so which one do you think has that kind of a uh, uh, way so which column has all the values differently so can you tell me what it is in the customer table id id so why is id has all the different uh, values because one particular ID will have a specific name, city, state, and pin. So another uh, customer name uh, will not be having the same ID. So that's Correct. why it is in unique in nature. Correct. So for this uh, customer table, this ID has all the unique values. Now we have one, two, three. Now let's say, for example, if you want to delete this person's, uh, let's say delete this Steve Smith's data. So we just delete it. And uh, this one will be gone off so uh, next it will become two and so on so this id will always be changing it will always be different it will not have same value uh, at two places so id is a unique column wherein no value is being repeated or there is no null values that can happen so for each and every table that you create or that the database admin creates they will find a unique column and they'll give this primary key association to it so in any table if a, if a column is very much unique there is no repetitive or there is no null values 
they will uh, the database administrators will attach the primary key to that particular column now this primary keys will be there for all the tables that you create as i said if you have 100 tables you will have to find out which column has all the new values there is no repetitive there is no null values happening they'll find that kind of column and they'll attach or they'll give this primary key to them for all the 100 tables 100 primary keys now why do we have to give this primary keys uh, like that is in order to maintain that relation so without primary keys, as I've said, this is a relationship or database management system. So these primary keys will help you to connect one table to another. Okay. So right now we have three tables. You can see for item also, we have item ID, name and description. So we may have same item IDs. We may have same description, but we will always have different item IDs. <laughs> and for the sales also. We may have different quantity, same quantity, we may have same price, we may have same item ID and customer ID, but always the sales ID changes. So we have given a primary key to the sales ID. So like that for all the tables, we will give a primary key to identify which one is unique. And if you go through this item and customer, you can see that this one has a primary key and this one has a primary key. But when we want to talk about sales, here we have sales ID, which we have given primary key, fine. And this item ID and customer ID, they are a bit different. So why? So if, so if you want to know, let's say you want to know how many sales has happened and how many people have bought it and what kind of item they have bought. So for that, you have written or you have uh, made a table for sales ID. And if you want to know which items has been uh, sold out, then what you do is here, whatever the item IDs are there. So you will connect this item IDs into here. This happens. So you use that key and you'll try to attach that onto this table. So with this, you can understand now what kind of item ID uh, can be noted down. Now here, if you type about item ID 2, then you can understand that item ID 2 is memory card. And if you talk about item ID 1, then you can understand that item ID 2 is camera. So once the item ID is connected to the, this one, sales table, next time in order to know which customer has bought it, then this customer ID will be connected here. So these primary keys will help you to connect with other tables. And later on, you can go through all the other stuff. So this connection, now this is a primary key and this is a primary key. However, when this key is connected to the sales table then this item id is not a original product or original column for the sales it is taken from outside right so this item id is taken from outside and this customer id is also taken from outside so those uh, columns which came from outside is what we call as foreign keys okay so these are called as foreign keys foreign keys why these are called as foreign keys because for that sales table these two are uh, things which came from outside right so these are not its own uh, columns so these came from outside and with the help of primary keys they got connected into the sales table so that is why as they came from outside they are called foreign keys for the sales table so like this is a basic uh, thing, a basic uh, connection or relation of tables. That is how it happens. So we'll go through a more detailed version of it as well. So right now, any doubts you have? I hope everybody's- Customer details when we put the customer ID. Sorry? We'll get the customer details when we put the customer ID in the sales. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So here we have different types of SQL commands. They are divided into four different types. One is data definition language, data query language, data manipulation language, and data controlled language. So when you talk about the usage of SQL for a business analyst, so as I've said, this database creation, update, delete, read, everything is done by data. Can you please repeat this again? Sorry. Someone was asking something.
continue. Yeah, fine. So if you couldn't, you know, if there's any kind of internet problem, just try to put a message on chat that I'll be able to read. Yeah. So coming back here, we have, uh, when, we're, when we're talking about usage of SQL for a business analyst, so we do not need to create any databases. We do not need to insert or add or delete any kind of data. The only thing that we do is to read data. So that is what our work will be mostly. And that is also a very rare scenario wherein you will not be going through the database every day to read some data. So that is only done when you want to refer some data just to get clarification on the requirements or for whatever reason. This happens very rarely wherein a BA will be going through uh, some data in order to understand something. However, that is a possibility. So for you to at least understand how to pull out a data, how to you know, make the data come onto the screen and how to segregate that data so that you can read it comfortably. Everything uh, you need to understand. Those basics will be enough for a business analyst to just go through the data and understand the data. So that is what we call as query. Query means you are trying to retrieve something. So for that, we use select command. We'll understand how that select command can be used. And all the other things, creating, alter, drop, rename, and this insert, update, delete, and grant revoke these are all done by the database administrator so as we've talked about grant and revoke wherein if you want to access some data in the databases you will have to first uh, formally send a mail or a request to the database admin so that they can grant you the access and once your work is done they'll revoke the access so these are the basic things now, uh, as I've said, we have so many different development environments to do our language. So we have Oracle uh, uh, Server, we have MISQL, we have Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So we have so many things. And uh, today, we'll be going through Microsoft's SQL Server Management Studio. And once it is once today's class is done, if you want to still practice uh, and how to how this database really works and how to really code in the softwares, so you can go through different variants. Which one do you think is most you know, preferable uh, that you can use it? It is not that you should only do it in Microsoft's uh, software only. So it is up to you. So let me open that. Yeah, so when you first open uh, this Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, it will ask you to confirm your server name and server type and all that. So just click on connect and you'll have everything set up. So right now it is very much blank. So what you need to do is you need to add a query. So with this, you'll have the uh, page coming up. So generally what will happen is at this point of time, even in companies also either they use Oracle server or Microsoft server, they'll connect all their uh, IT companies databases and uh, those databases can be coming up here. Here you can see we have five different databases, master, model, MSDB, Northwind and TempDB. So master, model, MSDB and TempDB, these are uh, you know, defaultly given databases. You should not do any kind of uh, changes or you should not do any kind of uh, you no. Know, alterations in that just leave them as it is and this northwind is an example or a sample data type, database that i have attached just for this class so if you want to work on that just click on that and you'll have this northwind coming up so generally all the databases will already be connected in your uh, it company and if you want to retrieve specific data then you would have to use few commands to retrieve that specific data now this Northwind data has uh, you know the customer, employee, and the sales, all these details, mostly like a retail store much. So we'll go through what really happens. 
Now you can see at this point of time, in the left side, we uh, have, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what is that nodes weight? That sample database. Sample database. Okay, so all the database we have created that will come there, right? Yes, all the database that you have created will show up here. And except okay. for these four, uh, you should uh, do any can do any kind of changes. However, do not touch these four: master, model, MSDB, and template. Okay. Now, creating okay. a, creating a database is also very much simple here. So, wherein I'm just trying to show you a sample one. Let's uh, you can just type in create. You can just type in database and you can just type in database name. Now create database and database name is sample, for example. And this SQL is a not a you know case sensitive language. You can type it however you like. And once you've created this one, if you click on execute, so it will execute and it will give you can say command completed successfully. And now this sample name of the database is created. Now, if, you, if I scroll this one down, you can see a sample database is created. Done. Now, if you want to delete a database, then it is also easy. You can just say prop, you can just say database, and you can just give the database name. So, and uh, what happens is now when you have more than one line of code, you should not just directly press on execute. It will give you an error because SQL will go through one by one, step by step of the line. So it will again go through this create database sample and it will give you an error because a, a database name or sample is already created. So you just have to highlight what you want to do and click on execute. So it is done, completely successful. Now just refresh this one and uh, you can see that uh, this sample will be gone. So it is pretty simple. Now, let's not go into creating all that. So we will go through the sample database, which is the north wind. So to see what is the data that is there in the north wind, so we'll first have to understand where its tables are because all the details are stored in the tables, as you already know, in relational database management systems. So what you can do is here, we have database security and so on. Just click on this plus icon on the database. And here you have our north wind database. Again, click on plus. And again, go for the tables here. So you can see we have from here so many tables we have categories, customers, employees, order details, products, region, shippers, suppliers, territories, and so on. Now, let's say you want to know how many employees are there. You can see dbo.employees. So you want to see how many employees are there for the north. So for that, what will be the command that you would use? So as I've said, you use in order to retrieve anything from the database onto the screen, you will use the select command. Okay. Select, and after that, star. Star represents everything from the table. So whatever information that you have on the table, bring it to me. That is what star means. From, and after from, you need to write down the table name. So after dbo dot, after the dot, whatever the name is there, that is the table name. Now you can see employees. Employee. So this Microsoft SQL Server will automatically give you the suggestions of what kind of table that you're going to go through. I just click on enter and I just execute. You can see I have all the employees details coming up. So we have around nine different employees, last name, first name, title, and their uh, title of courtesy, birth date, hire date, address, city, region, code, etc. So on. And photos, extensions, everything we have. In the tables form and for example let's say you want to only see the first name and last name of the employees you do not want all these things so what will you do you just remove this star option because star means everything and you do not want everything so what you'll do you will just write first name comma last name from employees so just click on execute you can see only the first name and last name comes up so it is as simple as that and if you go back from star again execute so you'll have the total uh, table coming up here. 
and uh, let's try to see what are the other uh, different tables of uh, we have select from employees so we'll just copy this and let's see select from mm, let's say customers let's see. So select from customers and we'll also have select from uh, products or let's say region so we have three different tables and i'll just click on execute so here all these three tables comes up let's say we have three different tables one is employee table and one is a customer table and one is a region table now instead of region let's say i'll try to remove the region and i'll try to look at the products so again i'll try to go through all this so i have again here we have products table so we have so many products coming up and uh, we have again customers and we have employees so all these de details we can see here now let's try to remove these two let's try to execute only products so we have different products here and then talk about different products if you want to segregate them from ids for example only the product side is you want to see or else you want to go through uh, only the product names and you can go for select product name again you can execute so only product name comes up and if you want other than uh, product name you want to have only three or four different kinds of fields let's say for example product name a unit price and recorder level for example so product name unit price comma record level so you can just click on execute and those particular details will be coming up sorry can i ask one question sure sure yeah. so whatever we are retrieving and viewing is this is have only the visibility so we cannot extract or do anything apart from just uh, you know, view and extract apart from this in the sense uh if you want to export the data yeah whatever we are running some query and getting some output of that yes so but we cannot use them like we can have only the view of whatever the query we are running so is this the way that it comes up you're saying yes yes yeah so we can uh, like you know in the table format only it will pop up but what we can do is yeah so what we can do is we can try to uh, use some of the commands just to have it uh, you know come up in our own fashion now if you talk about let's say uh, let's go for employee names so if you go for employee names and let's try to see here we have first name and last name here both are very much different now if you want to uh, let's say uh, combine this first name and last name, you want everything to come up on the uh, same table so at that point of time you should do so, like uh, my question is like uh, see, uh, whatever may be the request when we are using select and running a query in sql based thing we will get some output yeah there is, uh, obviously there might be some requirement from our organization that okay they want to uh, view how many employees are there with so and so yeah so uh, whatever we are working here so practically in an organizations what will be the usage of this some uh, you know top management may be asking i want uh, these many employees with certain salaries or so, and so. so when we are running this kind of uh, queries so can we export and share with them how we no, use you cannot do that so as i said for a ba the reading uh, will be the only option that is given as we will not so as you, as you have said you know if, uh, if the company asks us to you know go through the employee details and see whatever this is and whatever their hiring date is so whatever the requirements that the company give us regarding the data 
So generally, those are not given for the business analyst. So that is given for the data analyst or for analytics people. All these requirements are given, and as they will be uh, dealing a lot with the data, so they will have a few more perks of adding the data and exporting the data and so on. However, for a business analyst, uh, you know, we will not be dealing with data at all. So it is very rare that you know, uh, at uh, very few scenarios wherein we would have to go through the data which is available just to have a more clarity on our current requirements. So reading will be the only thing that will be very much uh, or more than sufficient for us. And if we were to export and uh, you know share that, we would have that option only when database admin allows us to. Do that. Okay. Understood. Yes. So, any more doubts till this point? If we not look at the BA perspective, general, it's a general query. Uh, after running some query, and uh, can we use this here for any visualization also, or? No. it has to be done in other this other. is only for uh, query uh, not query only we cannot query do data all data. the visualization and so on in uh, sql server management studios okay. Thank you. Uh, krishna can you uh, explain once again about that star uh, before uh, from yeah the star uh, indicates all the information now in this uh, table uh, in this employee table we have nine employees right so we are try, we are telling the SQL server that we want to have all the information which is present in the employee table. So the star represents all total information. Now, if you only want uh, select uh, from employees, let's say select from employees or select let's say select star from employees. Here there is one more catch where is the condition where uh, let's say where first name equals to let's say first name is um, go for Nancy Let's say this works. Yeah. So, uh, am I audible? So where a uh, first name uh, like please correct it. What what please correct it? Okay. Say where uh, where employee ID let's say employee ID is equals to one. So if we try to do this, this comes up. So we can go for the employee specific and uh, where first name. Let's go for a first name or last name. Where in first name is equals to so if I click on this one, you can see if this comes up. So we can segregate uh, or we can retrieve the data. So based on different inputs or different uh, uh, variants. So based on whatever our comfortable of data will be. Okay. Oh, uh, Krishna, if you don't mind, like if you can explain, like which are the functions are uh, used 
uh, like equal to and uh, single code, double code, and Sorry, all can, these like basic yeah. content. Can you please uh, repeat once again? Yeah, simple question is, uh, can you uh, explain a bit on the functions used while retrieving these queries, like when we use equal to and like and yeah, if you I, are I, using I, I, single code, double code? Yeah, sure, yeah. Okay. I'll come okay. to that. So, any more doubts at this point? Uh, Krishna, I have one doubt. <laughs> uh, how can we select the columns only where I require only employee ID, uh, then first name, and the birth date? Only three columns I want to show. Then, uh... so if you want to show only three columns, let's I'll remove this. So, if you want to show only three columns, remove the star. And you can type in what are the columns that you need. Employee ID, let's say first name, and after that, uh, whatever the next name is, birth date, for example. So, birth date from employees and execute, you will be having that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And uh, one more doubt uh, why, what do you use for where you're using where no, first? Uh, can you explain me the uh, function that where you are using first where uh, before that? Yeah, not not in this. I'll obviously go through all the functions. So let, let's try to uh -huh. find if anybody has any doubts at this point of time. Everybody okay, okay, sure. Thank you. Uh, Krishna, one more doubt. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Please tell me. What is the doubt? Uh, yes, these commands uh, like in blue, select from that we can write in single line or uh, we have to put enter. You can write uh, any any way else. There is no any uh, okay. no particular format for this. Okay. 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 And let's say that uh, we want to bring up the first name and last name. Okay. So both. Okay. Uh, let's say I want to write it like this. Let's say select first name. First name plus last name, and I'll have this brackets So I haven't uh, told how to make tables yet, Shweta. So we'll just go through that again, not a problem. Now you can see what happened. So select, uh, let me have this one as well. Select star from employees. So let me first go through this. Now here we have this total employee table, right? So employee table is there and we have all the details. Now, if we were to only want to look at the first name and last name combinedly in one particular table. So then we can have this, we can have the first name and we can attach the last name and we can give that particular column this name, which is full name. So if I were to execute this one, this only one particular line, I click on execute, you can see a full name is coming up. Wherein both first name and last name are attached and came out in a full particular table. Got it? Understood? Krishna, if we want uh, detail, all the details of employees having employee ID from 4 to 7. Yes. Yeah, we, we can also do that. So wherein, let's say select employees uh, from, select staff from employees, all the details where employee ID. Employee ID um, so equals. I think we have that uh, percentile somewhere over here. So let me work on that command. It is somewhere around. Four, I hope so. So employee ID star 
so we first have this and wherein employee id starts from 4 to 7 Yeah, I think somewhere uh, it's around like this. It will start from uh, employee ID star four. Okay, only four is coming. So I think I might have missed this command. So you can you can go through and you can watch, uh, search for it. So it is start somewhere around percentile where it starts from. Uh, hashtag or this person die and uh, if you want to go to the different phase wherein if you want to have uh, Krishna can we can we write employee ID each between four and seven sorry so between and, and can be used and you're saying uh, employee ID is between four and six, six, seven between so four between and, 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 and we will use okay between four and seven. Four and seven. Right? So let's say if that works. Yeah. You can see. That. So it is just a casual writing. So between four and seven. Okay. And we can have different commands. So as I said, based on different uh, requirements that you know, the company might ask you based on the first name, based on the last name, based on the title based on uh, uh, the employee from this range to this range so you can do all the different stuff and you can try to extract it and you can also have some uh, no whatever that we did here this is what we call as alias okay so what we call as alias so alias is nothing but So alias is nothing but a given name now here generally first name is the table name and last name is the table name and uh, for that we have combined that first name and last name and we have given that as a full name table name, right and this changes whatever we're doing now if we were to select this if we were to run this one here the table is showing as the full name now is it a permanent change will the table be like this no now, if you again go for select star from employees, you will have the same table coming up. We cannot change any of uh, the things that we can uh, you know, go through here. We'll only do a temporary changes just for the viewing purposes, just so that we can understand it properly. We can have all these different things coming up. But when you open the table again at the end, then you will see the entire table unchanged. Okay. Uh, so Krishna, for example, uh, if, if we want to uh, edit or alter some information from uh, ID 4 to 7, so we will write those commands below that only, na? whatever we, we changes we are going to do that, uh, we will write one by one below that. Yeah, as I've said, uh, we will not be doing any editing and uh, not doing all that stuff, we cannot do it. So we will just be retrieving whatever that is already there. We cannot edit, we cannot uh, delete, or we cannot do all those stuff. So what we do is we'll try to efficiently uh, bring out the data, whatever that is there, in a way that we can really understand. Now, for example, in here, where a star from employers, where let's say that uh, name starts from, it's a name like, let's say whoever starts with P, and also, Sorry, in each drop name, let's try to write a first name. Here also I write it as first name. Let's say P and uh, K. So here, what happened is, 
if I were to select this and if I were to run. So there is no employee whose name ends with P and starts with K. Only the first name we are talking about. There is no first name which starts with P and there is no first name which starts with K. Now let's say instead of P, let's have N. And here instead of this, we'll have W. Here you can see we have first name Nancy uh, N. After that, we have percent L. So whatever name that starts with L, I want that to be coming up. Or whatever name that ends with W, I want that to be coming up. So you have divided or you have want you have taken that data in this format. So this like represents similar values, wherein whatever the things that are similarly is there that you need to bring up and this where is a condition you would use it for conditional basis wherein select everything from the employees and in that there is one condition you want to put in wherein only first name starts with n or first name ends with w would have to come up so that is what you said and you can again go for set tables and if you want to try try to play with it a bit more then let's say you want to have everybody in the employee's name except whose first name starts with uh, Steven, for example. You do not want Steven to be coming up on the list. Then first name not equals to what is the first name? Steven. Now, if I were to select this, you can see Steven is at five employee ID five. Now if I execute it, you can see uh, Steven is not there. He's gone. So this is how you can do different commands. You can have, you know, uh, in order to have this, all these basic commands, what they really do and what are the different kinds of commands are there, which could help you in order to retrieve data in any way possible so that you can really understand uh, how things should be there and how the requirements and how the data could be uh, any form of help to you. So you can go through these different commands of the SQL and try to learn from it. And once you're done with this, you can try to go for different development environments like Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle Server. Try to go through different servers and try to install one which you think will be more comfortable and will be more usable to and try to go through all the different features and try to add some sample data and work on it. So it will be very easy for you to really uh, get into this uh, SQL space. Yeah. Uh, so sir, these uh, commands remain same for different uh, environment uh, which you are speaking about yeah. like yeah. Oracle yeah. and all. all. Yes, all the same, okay. all are the same things. The only thing is that in some uh, server management studios, they require you to add this uh, semicolon at the end for each of the line that you write down and some it doesn't require. So that is the only change. Let's say if you want to go for this where region is not none, you can have this. So select everything from employees when the region is not null. Here you can see we have null options here. So where we want all the things wherein region is not null. So we'll remove all the null options and we'll want to have only the not null ones. We'll execute this and you can see only the regions which have all filled have came up. Now if you want to fill that null options, okay. Now, uh, where uh, what you'll do? So any idea what you'll do with it? What we wanted to do? Replace null to let's say SA. Let's see if this command works or not. Yeah. 
instead of null replace region region Mm -hmm. So let's let's see that command in that. And yeah, so if you were to do it in this way, for example, so wherein you have all the employees, select all the employees and from a particular location let's say from uh, uh, region select all the employees select say select name from employees select first name from uh, employees where uh, employee id and now let's see so what happens select first name from employees where employee id in 1347 so we have selected first name of those particular employees with the id so like this we will have different commands now as you go through the as you go through this learning process of learning different commands so you'll understand uh, where to use these commands and how to use this. now one of the best uh, thing that you can do is go through different materials which are already available and uh, whatever the presentation that has been you know given in this video we will be sharing that as well and uh, there is a small cheat sheet for you also just a gift so that you can go through that cheat sheet and you have all the commands that you can basically understand and where those commands are really used and uh, you can refer that while you're trying to um, you know learn sql and it will be very easy or it will be very handy for you as well okay so any doubts you have anybody uh, yeah, sir. actually i just wanted to know what is used for ba this as you told uh, BA is nothing to do like any edit, uh, any modification or any edit or delete or something like that. Yeah, so uh, as I've already been saying, so BA doesn't have much use of SQL and much use of retrieving data. So it is, uh, you know, in very rare scenarios wherein you would have to go through some data uh, which is already available just to understand uh, how things work and what is the data that is there and how you can work on it. Just for those purposes, you need to understand just the basics of this select queries. So you don't have to you know, work so much hard just to learn this language because you will not have that much of a use. It is just for you to understand how these things really work and what are the basic commands that you would need to use in order to retrieve data whenever it is needed. Okay, so it is not that much used for you. Okay. So here uh, in this software you can see the database is coming up and if you pull down this database you'll have all your tables options and you can see all the tables and you can go through each and every table by using the select command so you can have select star means every bit everything in the table from and you can give the table name so select star from orders so and if you click on this you'll have all the orders coming up so like this you can uh, you know go through sample databases and you can go through all the commands and you can play with them you can learn how these commands work and how we can do all this so we can just retrieve the data from the we can just retrieve anything we want from the data but yes. we cannot uh, like make changes in the data hmm. correct 
it's just uh, whatever information we require we can uh, require uh, whatever we want we can just take out and we can't make any changes in the data for that we have to make the changes in the file itself yeah so all the data changing can be done by dba you will not be doing any of that so as i've said we only go through the data to understand something or not to retrieve and go through it and we'll close it yeah with the help of the commands only no? yes, we can correct. retrieve anything we want from the data correct. with the help of the commands So okay, do we have, you. hello? Yeah. So do, have, do we have to, you know, create a table here itself or we can extract the table from uh, somewhere else also? Yeah, so you don't have to create any tables because, you know, when you're trying to retrieve data, there is already data present. Now here you can see I haven't created any kind of table yet. So all these things are already there in your database and I just use some of user some of the select commands to retrieve whatever data that is already present. So you don't have to create any tables. You don't have to create any databases. So the only rarest thing that you will be doing regarding SQL is just go through the tables which are already there. You'll use the select commands and you will use you'll use the different functions just to view that in a comfortable way. But sir, for uh, uh, suppose for uh, practice purpose, uh -huh. uh, where we can find that data? I mean, like if we want to have a database, yeah, you can so, just directly search for sample databases for SQL, and you will have loads of it coming up. You can just download it, and you can use it. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so hi sir. Uh, actually, as a candidate, uh, what are all the uh, tools we should be aware of uh, at the time of the interview? Can you please tell, sir? So tools you should be aware of uh, are the basic tools which you have already used. One is Visio, which is uh, one tool we use for uh, use case diagram and activity diagram. And you would have to also have a basic idea about its alternatives as well. Now, some companies use Visio and some companies use Lucid Chart. Some companies use eDraw Max. Some companies use Visual Paradigm. So, majorly, use uh, Visio is there and try to uh, learn few things about its alternative softwares as well, which is Lucid Chart, uh, eDraw Max, and so on. And after that, you'll have a wireframing. We have Balsamic that we use here, and we also have other software called Pencil. So there are different alternatives also you need to keep in mind and Azure RP we use it for prototyping and some other companies may use Figma or Adobe XD and uh, those are the basic tools here and you also need to have knowledge on Jira. I think you will be having the Jira software awareness session coming up as well. So these are the major four tools that you need to keep in mind. Okay. Yeah, any more doubts? Sir, how to use read write comments here, uh, commands? Read write commands will not be there. The read option you will have it now as a BA, as I've said. So you will only have the option to read, and we are whatever that we are reading, whatever that we are doing from the start. So we are just reading the data. We are just going through the data which is already available. We are not writing or we are not creating anything. We are not deleting anything. Nothing. So whatever we are doing is reading. In that reading, we would use these various commands and methods to retrieve data and to showcase it in a comfortable way. Okay. Uh, Krishna, uh, two things from my side, two questions. Yeah. Uh, one thing, is there any uh, free version of that SQL tool is available on the, uh, anywhere? Yeah. Whatever that I'm using right now. Right now, I'm not using anything. Actually, I'm using Excel. Uh, yeah, I'm talking about not using... whatever the Microsoft SQL Server that I'm using right now, you can download it for free. It is not a paid one. Okay. So you can just type in Microsoft SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio, and uh, you can download that easily, and you can install it. Okay, okay, fine. And is there any... Uh, uh, booklet or something for all the commands of sql to practice actually means the command which we have shown i have write it down but there must be some other things other commands would also be there so is there any you can share with us any uh all anything which have all the commands to practice 
So uh, I couldn't say that it has all the commands, but uh, no, I will share the PPT that I have gone, uh, I have told you about today, and along with that, as I've said, I'll I'll uh, uh, will share you this cheat sheet. Uh, in that, you'll have most of the commands which you can uh, easily go through and understand. Now that also generally you can download it on the uh, Google, and I have downloaded it for you, and you will be I uh, will be sharing that to you with the video link as well, so you can just go through that. And if you want to practice that, if you want to practice more, you can go for w3schools.com or javatpoint.com uh, in order to learn more about SQL. However, we'll be sharing uh, those basic documents, not to. Okay, okay, fine. Any more doubts regarding SQL? Are we going to uh, learn about joins also in this? Sorry, are we going to what? Uh, learn about joins. How we can use joins in SQL? No, not not here. So uh, with the cheat sheet which I am sending, you will have uh, the clear description of how joins are used. So joins and all that, you will be having that particular PDF where you can you can go through that and you can understand all that. Okay. Fine. So any more questions? Uh, when we install that software, so that time they asked us to uh, put their um, server name. Yes. So what is that? So that server name will most of the time be your system's name only. So every, like generally when you talk about the databases and retrieving, but obviously want a database server, right? So in general, if you talk about IT companies, they'll have huge servers and you'll connect that with your systems. Here, as we are using a remote one, so here we're using a laptop or a system where it doesn't have any kind of servers, it takes, uh, it creates a local server in your system. So this is the local server that we're talking about, where you can browse for more, and you'll have few servers, local servers and network services. So click on local server, and you go for the database engine, and here you'll have your system's local server. You can click on OK, and you can connect this, and that will be popping okay. up. And whatever the databases that you create and whatever the things that you work on will be stored in the databases here. You can see the North Wind and so on. Okay. Okay. Sir, I have a doubt. Uh, yeah. It's a kind of silly doubt. Sir, I'm a bit confused between uh, server and database. Can you just explain a bit about these two things? See, server is a, a very big thing. So in the servers, we store all the databases. We can have 10, 20, 30 different databases can be stored in a single server. Okay. Okay. And in that databases, you can have all your uh, tables and information and so on. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah, so when you're sometimes okay. talk about server got down, then that means so many things have got. Fine, sir. So is there any other questions? Fine then. So uh, that is it. I hope you have learned uh, something in here. And if you want to learn more, as I've suggested, go through this a couple of websites. And we'll also be sharing you the sheet sheet where you have all the basics, joins, everything. You can just go through and you can really understand that. And yeah. So with this, we can end our session for today. Thank you so much for attending and have a very good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.